These days, we are much more focused on cardiovascular disease. The thymus is a, an area of interest for me and something I will be returning to and repair may return to in the future. But for now, the focus is um, the thing that kills the most people. So I think if you, if you take anything away from what I'm going to say today, it should be the name of the company, um, Repair. If we're trying to address aging, uh, if you have a way to address aging, if you cannot point to something that you are repairing in our physiology or biochemistry, then you might not be on the right course. So we developed the, uh, the cholesterol degrading platform, which is pretty much what it says on the can. Now, these days we're, we're raising via, uh, via an investment bank. So you'll have to excuse the, um, the expansion of our, our boilerplate which uh, you know somebody will always complain if we don't say, hey, the future is, is uncertain. Prediction is hard, particularly when you're, you're talking about the future. But to summarize who we are, uh, I know many of you know us, but for those who don't, um, we developed the cholesterol degrading platform. This is a first in class therapeutic approach. Nobody else is doing this. Nobody else has done this. Um, and our primary focus in terms of applying this to the biochemistry of mammals is to reverse atherosclerosis, which uh, kills an enormous number of people. And since atherosclerosis, unlike many conditions, is in fact universal, if nothing else got to you first, atherosclerosis would kill everybody. So what we do is we provide cells with a de novo pathway that allows them to safely degrade and eliminate excess or modified cholesterol. And as we'll explain, um, this is something that the body really doesn't do on its own. And when you provide this capacity, we can do interesting things. Um, we have two lead candidates that we primarily focus on. We work on um, AAV delivery and also building cells that can be delivered as a cell therapy that are equipped with uh, CDP. We also do some work on lipid nanoparticle delivery of mRNA, which is quite fashionable these days and has utility in some situations. Our most interesting results to date, um, we have managed to produce a near halving of um, atherosclerotic plaque lipids in a mouse model of atherosclerosis with a single treatment of CDP. And uh, in the case of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, um, a sizable problem that's somewhat outside the remit of aging, but uh, very clearly related to cholesterol. In NASH prevention models, we've shown quite dramatic reductions in, um, in pathological measures, as well as an improvement in, in glucose metabolism, a reduced insulin resistance, which is hard to do, and nobody's really done very well on that front um, with regard to NASH. But as I said, primarily atherosclerosis. This is the problem that kills a lot of people worldwide. Atherosclerosis, in a nutshell, is um, it's a problem of, of macrophage dysfunction, really. Macrophages are the immune cells that are supposed to stop this problem from happening. And they do when you're young. They do it very well. You, nobody who's young has, um, has these horrible fatty plaques building up in their arteries and killing them. And that's because your macrophage cells are doing a good job at catching all of this cholesterol that ends up in your artery walls and throwing it back into the bloodstream. Uh, when you get older, you have increased oxidative stress um, and the, the oxidization of lipids really works a number on your macrophages. They're, they're not equipped to handle it at all. And so you get increased dysfunction, inflammation and failure to, to remove these um, lipids. And in fact, eventually the macrophages just start dying and making the plaques um, ever bigger as you go along. And eventually your blood vessels rupture or become blocked and you die. It's very straightforward, very mechanical and uh, very fatal. And uh, the, the degree to which it is fatal is the degree to which you have plaque. If you have too much of this stuff, your mortality is huge. And you can see in the bottom right there, that, that's a big difference. Um, and that really reflects the, um, the vulnerability of your blood vessels to pressure-induced rupture or blockage and uh, immediate horrible consequences thereafter. Now, unfortunately, most of the present approaches, in fact, near all of the available present approaches, do very badly when it comes to reversing this, this determinant of death. Um, you can slow it down. You can't really reverse it. The, the current approaches, I'm sure you're all familiar with statins. 
Um, and many of you will know about the uh, the next generation of technologies such as PCSK9 inhibitors, which are far more capable than statins of lowering blood cholesterol. All of these approaches really target the amount of cholesterol in your bloodstream. And by reducing cholesterol overall, you also reduce oxidized cholesterol, give your macrophages a little more breathing room, and uh, thereby you get this mortality reduction. But that's all you get. You don't get a reduction, you don't get a reversal of plaque. And that's a big problem for many of these people whose disease is identified way too late when they're in a very serious state. And, you know, they can't get back from that state. And as the prices on the right here show, there is a tremendous appetite um, for doing better. Nobody knows how well the ANG PTL3 inhibitors are going to do, but everybody wants them to be better. And therefore, here we, here we stand with a half a million a year price tag for um, uh, genetic forms of accelerated atherosclerosis. Um, we have to do better than this. Um, we think uh, we can do better than this. So if you wanted to do a taxonomy of ways to address atherosclerosis, um, if we cut out some of the very minor things that are happening on the edge of the community um, for the sake of simplicity, there's only really two ways to go. You either go to the liver, where most of the cholesterol outside the central nervous system is manufactured, um, and then it's delivered to the rest of the body via the bloodstream, and you try to intervene in the liver. And this is a really convenient um, location because if you take a drug, most of it ends up in your liver, uh, which is why liver diseases are such a popular area of development. It makes delivery very easily. The other place to, um, to intervene is in the macrophages themselves. As I said, this is a condition of macrophage dysfunction. It's not really a condition of excess cholesterol. It's the excess cholesterol causes macrophages to become dysfunctional. Nobody does this other than us, um, to the best of our knowledge. There's certainly rumblings in the research community and some interesting programs that are very early stage, but we think that that's, that's a good way to go. Um, which is not to say that you can't make some improvements by going and tackling the liver itself um, by, by, reduce, by either making it make less cholesterol or taking up more cholesterol, whatever works to get less cholesterol in the bloodstream. And at that point, you're going to get these 20% um, reductions in mortality. So what do we do? Um, we make cells able to do this. In short, take cholesterol and reduce it into a generally recognized as safe catabolite that gets kicked out of the cells and quickly removed from the bloodstream. Cholesterol is like, it's like energy. The body doesn't really create it or destroy it um, to a first approximation. It does shuttle it around a lot. And that gives rise to these Rube Goldberg systems that are prone to failure in late life. And you end up, or if you have genetic disease and you end up with too much cholesterol somewhere and you get pathology. As a result, there's, there's actually a lot of conditions where you start to see, wait, this is, this is a problem of too much cholesterol in this one place in the body. Maybe we, should, maybe we should do something about that. But you can't by manipulating existing human biochemistry um, because we don't break down cholesterol. It's, cells are just not equipped to do that. They're equipped to, to package it and throw it around and store it and get rid of it and pick it up, but not, not change it into something else. So we have two therapeutic modalities, as I mentioned earlier. Um, when we're targeting the liver, which we do, um, we're using something along the lines of an AAV-based uh, gene therapy, where we deliver this to the liver, and that causes salutary effects. And alternatively, we are making our own macrophages. Um, we don't want to edit macrophages in the body, because editing macrophages makes them angry. It's, in fact, very hard to manipulate macrophages safely. Uh, without turning them into M1 phenotype macrophages that just want to rampage around and secrete inflammatory cytokines, um, which is sort of a challenge. It's good for cancer if you do that, but um, you're not going to see many macrophage therapies outside that that don't involve making induced pluripotent stem cells. And this picture here is actually a bunch of our CDP expressing pluripotent stem cells on the verge of being differentiated into uh, CDP expressing macrophages. We have a whole bunch of whole bunch of these stacking up in our incubators right now. Now, in the context of atherosclerosis, when I say atherosclerosis, I really mean three separate conditions. There's, there's the wild type atherosclerosis that everybody has, item A here. Um, but then there's also the hypercholesterolemias. Um, and the hypercholesterolemias are genetic conditions where you ha either have one copy or two copy 
of the relevant gene mutated. In this case, it's the LDLR gene, which helps the liver take up cholesterol. And if the liver can't take up cholesterol, then, then well, you're going to have an enormous amount of cholesterol in your bloodstream and you're going to get atherosclerosis very early. These people are discovered late, they die young, and there's very little that can be done for them at this present time. And there's, there's a tremendous amount of interest in developing um, ways to help these people. Now, fortunately, if we can help them, we can also treat atherosclerosis itself. And by the alchemy of uh, the way in which uh, modern development works in the regulated environment, we are heavily incentivized to go after these orphan conditions first um, and then adapt our package to atherosclerosis. So we believe that the AAV approach, which is enormously expensive, by the way, in terms of manufacture, is best suited to an orphan condition like HOFH. Um, but if we get the macrophages working, when we get the macrophages working, we can use that for anything. It doesn't matter to us how your plaques came about. We're sending in the macrophages and they will dismantle it, which gets us in a very strong position, I think, um, in terms of the development of the company. If you can take your treatment straight from a, um, an orphan condition to a very widespread condition without any really further development, that, that's a good place to be. It gives you the best of both worlds. So I've, I've, we'll just talk about the, um, the liver side of things, first of all. Um, I've really shown this before. This is a slightly, this next one is a slightly more detailed version of uh, what we've, what we've said, so told people we've achieved. So we take mice, a mouse model of atherosclerosis, which have the APOE gene knocked out. Um, it makes them rather, it makes it difficult for them to correctly maintain their arteries and they get atherosclerosis as a result when they're fed a high fat diet. We put them on the high fat diet for long enough to develop atherosclerosis. We give them a high dose AAV um, carrying CDP and wait a month. And the result here is what you see is a something like a halving of plaque lipids, which you can actually see in the cross sections of aortic root on the left there, the fiddly little bits in the middle of those diagrams of those pictures, those are uh, valves. And the red is, uh, is lipids, so way less lipids in the, um, in the treated mice. And this is a really impressive result. Um, it's very fast. Uh, you, uh, statins can't really do this um, to a first approximation. And if they did, it would take, you know, a year. So it's, it's a really good demonstration that we're onto something that can have a very large effect when we translate it into humans. Now, on the, um, on the macrophage side of the house, we are presently you know, stacked full in our incubators of, of induced pluripotent stem cells taken from mice and humans, and um, we are converting them into these, these macrophages step by step. And we've done this for many cells. We put CDP into many cell types. And the beauty of this is because it's a de novo pathway, it's an entirely new thing that you put into cells, you're not really dependent on what type of cell it is or where it comes from. Um, so 293Ts here are, are a workhorse cell, a human cell type that everybody uses to test things out because they're kind of good for that. Um, U937s on the right are, uh, are a type of uh, monocyte line. Monocytes are the precursor to macrophages. Uh, they, they change, they, they sit in the bloodstream, come from the spleen, they um, become macrophages when they enter tissue. And as you can see, the result is exactly the same. Um, it goes there and it turns cholesterol into the catabolite. And we've many other examples of cell types where you get exactly the same, but that would make a very boring, a very boring um, diagram here. Now, CDP expression in cells is uh, non-toxic, um, unless you're a cancer cell, in which case it, it makes it less happy. But in normal cells, um, you'll see that the cells don't really have any, uh, any effect in terms of cell death um, under exposure to cholesterol or just normally. So this is great. It's a very safe approach to modifying cells to make them achieve the result you want to achieve. Now, importantly, one of the results we want to achieve is to remove foam cells from the picture. Now, a foam cell is a macrophage that has become dysfunctional in the context of um, an atherosclerotic plaque and is full of cholesterol and lipids. And uh, it's called a foam cell because it deposits the lipids into bubbles inside it and you get this sort of foamy appearance. On the left, you see a bunch of um, 
raw 264 mouse macrophages that are not doing so well. They've ingested a bunch of cholesterol and they can't deal with it. Um, and the cholesterol is, is fluorescent in this case. So it's very easy to see that these are unhappy macrophages. Um, they're pathological, they will die soon. And if this were a plaque, they'd be expanding the plaque by adding their mass to the plaque itself when they die, and also secreting inflammatory signals that attract more macrophages to suffer the same fate. Now, in principle, if you do what we do on the right here and give these macrophages CDP, they no longer become foam cells because they can break down the cholesterol. So in theory, they just keep going and keep doing their work and keep on maintaining the plaque. Uh, and maintaining the blood vessel and removing the plaque bit by bit. Our, our end goal is get these macrophages into people one way or another and leave them there for long enough that atherosclerosis reverses itself completely. And this is uh, in principle, a very feasible goal. And we hope to have some great data on this from animal studies later in the year. We've already injected um, suitable, suitably manufactured um, CDP expressing macrophages into mice and first results soon. So when we do take this to the clinic, um, we are looking at universal cell lines. And um, with macrophages, unlike T cells um, or other immune therapies where you can, you can take a patient's cell and manipulate them and put them back, you, you can't do that with macrophages. Macrophages do not want to be manipulated. They get very, very upset. They turn inflammatory. They will do things you don't want to do. So what you have to do is make a universal cell line. Uh, you have to make a line of macrophages from iPSCs um, that are in some way modified to be invisible to the immune system, uh, such that you can put macrophages from a line derived from person A into persons B through, through Z. Um, and there's a number of companies doing this, and we're in collaboration with some of them, and we've talked to most of them, so I don't have to mention names, you guys who know, know who these guys are. Um, the, the attractive part of this, um, the many attractive parts of, parts of this, one, monocytes and macrophages automatically home to plaque. You can inject them anywhere and they will go to where they're needed. They last for months. And once you're at a point where you're generating cells from a line, you're looking at a cost that's very similar to present day stem cell therapies. I, you could get this down to five figures or maybe even four figures once you get into the, um, into the realm of economic, economics of scale. And it's a very attractive um, mode of therapy. So we have a proprietary method of creating macrophages from iPSCs. Um, I, I would, I would venture to say it's not hard but also very hard everything to do with cells is um is is really obnoxious to work with don't work with cells children dogs um you'll you'll have a hard time of it but we produce these things reliably and robustly and uh they're looking pretty good so who we are um you guys know me I've been around the field for a while. I write Fight Aging. Um, I've invested. I've helped raise money for various um, nonprofits like the Sens Research Foundation. Bill German, also an investor with a, um, a finance background, is my co-founder. Um, Morad Topors is a friend of the inventor of um, CDP and a very skilled and experienced PI with uh, Pfizer and Harvard. Um, in the cardiometabolic space. And Bobby Kahn is a, is a physician and a specialist in atherosclerosis who has put drugs through the FDA already and uh, keeps us on the straight and narrow on that front. Our advisors include uh, Richard Hong Cannon, uh, who invented this, um, this technology. Graham, who many of you know from uh, the conference circuit, uh, keeps us advised on the matter of how you make macrophages happy or unhappy. And Andrew and Babak are uh, specialists and well-known in the field of um, liver, liver um, pathology and cardiovascular disease, respectively. Now, I did say that I was going to uh, say something about NASH and left it to last. NASH is um, very prevalent for a condition that is really a consequence of obesity for nearly everybody who suffers it. Um, we live in an age of obesity. And as a result, there is a very large market waiting for whoever can um, 
produce a way to really help with Nash. Um, one of the reasons that this is such an interesting area, even is completely unrelated to aging, really. But one of the reasons it's a very interesting area for a farmer is that uh, there isn't really a good way to deal with it right now. Um, Nash includes a a whole range of unpleasant things. Some of them are related to aging that um, we don't have a good handle on, which is chronic inflammation, fibrosis, insulin resistance, things that are currently challenging to deal with. So while Nash would be an incredibly minor problem if everybody would just eat less, um, it's currently a major problem because there doesn't seem to be any likelihood of people eating less in the near future. So what can we do? Um, we've run a couple of models over the past, um, over the past six months. Um, one, one delivering um, AAV, CDP, and uh, one an experiment with um, lipid nanoparticle delivery of mRNA um, to, to try to get to the liver. And we see that um, we can reduce quite reliably and by a sizable amount some of the issues associated with NASH. Um, in NASH, for example, stellate cells in the liver are very active, and this is um, associated with fibrosis. We reduce that quite comprehensively with a single treatment with AAV. Um, a macrostatosis is the formation of uh, droplets of, um, of lipids in the liver, which is, of course, not a good thing and not what you want at all. Um, a very pathological liver is, is just a lump of fat. It's, it's really not good. Um, and getting rid of that problem is something that's also a challenge in the present, the, the present medical environment. Most interestingly, however, we can reduce insulin resistance. Um, this is a high level property of the liver and the system as a whole, and that we can address this um, robustly and significantly in a NASH model, a widely accepted NASH model is um, very interesting uh, and interesting, has interesting implications for the state of science on NASH and liver pathology as to the degree to which cholesterol um, accumulation in hepatocytes is a significant source of pathology in this disease, which um, has been a point you could argue either way um, in the past. One of the things I, I repeatedly say to people is that it is very hard to understand in aging or indeed any other condition, which of the items, which of the mechanisms you can identify are actually the most important. The only way to really do it is to go get rid of one of those mechanisms in isolation and see what happens. Um, and that is what we're doing here. We have a way to, in isolation, get rid of excess cholesterol. Um, and we are seeing um, in these studies, in this one, and in our, uh, in our results in an atherosclerosis model, we see just how important that is um, to pathology. And with that, I will say uh, thank you.